Hello everyone, it's your options guy. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna go over SoFi, and I know I've been talking about SoFi quite a bit lately, especially in this channel. But yeah, so we're gonna talk about SoFi, and we actually have a lot to uh, talk about in today's video. So uh, one of the first things that we're gonna talk about is we're gonna look at some chart data, basically to try to figure out like kind of where it's heading, and um, just try to figure out like the support and resistance. The other thing that we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys is what's going on with options specifically for SoFi and show you basically if it's bullish, if it's bearish, like where it's going. We're gonna talk about that, and then I'll I'll go over the two newest articles that came out um, regarding SoFi, and then we'll also cover basically like what's happening within like short interest, and lastly I'll cover my portfolio and what's going on there and basically like my my trades or basically like what I'm intending to do and. I, I am doing some SoFi trades and stuff. So yeah, all I ask is that you make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment as well. And so yeah, let's get into it. So SoFi, so lately we've been basically right here, kind of ranging between that 20 and 25 range for a while now. So we recently um, did like a full like merge or IPO if you want to call it from from IPOE of like we came from the SPAC world so now we're officially like you know in as you know its own thing and then ever since then we've been ranging between this 20 and 25 range so as you can see here um actually a couple days ago we actually broke that 25 out range just a little bit and then I remember I think it was like my last video I was talking about like is there going to be a short squeeze or like you know is it going to pull back? Like, let me know your opinions. And then I was talking about how the RSI is getting really close to the overbought range. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had like a pullback. And as you can see, we did have a pullback because we were definitely up here, which is the over overbought range. So we had a pullback and now it's like a little bit stabilizing. And yeah, it's been interesting because lately we, we have been, um, ever since that, that huge spike, we've been dropping a little bit and then kind of consolidating back into this 22 23 range and today we, we did actually like there was somewhat of, of a catalyst today where um basically our the ceo of sofi was talking in in uh i think it was like the fintech or exchange like investor type of type of um like conference where basically just talking to other investors or trying to capture other big big investors about like you know telling them about SoFi and everything so that that was basically somewhat of a catalyst today so we did initially drop in in the morning but I think that that drop was for two reasons one because I think again we had like a huge spike and then it was somewhat of a healthy pullback and then the second reason was because of the whole inflation report data came out this morning and then a lot of stocks dropped in the morning and then they s slowly uh crept back up so i think it's, that's basically what happened and then so that's why we're around this 23 range so this is basically my analysis that we're still stuck between this range 20 to 25 and until we break that 25 and hold over 25 i don't think we're gonna see um you know the next resistance which is around 28 so we have to break this 25 range and hold above it for a while and then that will kind of like showcase the breakout and then you know on our way to like the next resistance so as you can see basically I, I plotted like this line that this is kind of where we've been trading at and this is kind of like the downtrend uh, side of it so we're still like on, on an uptrend type of wedge and it seems like we're getting close to the wedge based on my analysis but again um, the, there's a lot of like a lot of things happening right now with SoFi, especially with the whole short interest talk and everything, which I'll cover in a second. But let's go over to the options data now. So for options for today, uh, it was almost like 50/50. You can see like the call flow and the put flow. So today was 50/50, and and it's interesting because normally it's it's um, more one-sided on the call flow. This is actually the first time I'm seeing a little bit more puts coming to SoFi. So what does that mean exactly? Well, if we're just looking at the the data, so the put the puts that came in are basically um, 
a twenty dollar or, or twenty strikes, meaning they expect it to to pick to dip back down uh, within the short term at least. And um, on the other side, the call sections they were more in the money, so if it does dip back down, they're still expecting it to to increase. Like within let's see. 820 716 so th these ones are pretty close so it's kind of like contradictory right here between these calls and puts so and this one right here is a really big order it's 1.3 million uh so this one right here and this is a block one so normally block is usually uh the big investors the big institutions so um whoever bought this they're basically expecting it to move up at least because they bought it around the 23 range so they still see some upward movement based on um, just looking at it, at this data. So I just wanted to show you guys like in comparison to like this week, like the call to put ratio. So, so as you can see, it's been heavy call flow and um, just a small amount of put flow. But for today, it it is somewhat almost 50-50. So I'll give you guys the data uh, tomorrow if, if there's SoFi uh, options as well. And, and these are the big options, by the way. So this only tracks like like premiums of 25k and and up. So these are like not, not the little ones that retail investors are putting. I mean, well, these could also be retail investors, but uh, these are typically usually like the bigger money. So that's that's what's going on with with SoFi. So it seems like more puts are being uh, purchased. So we'll see tomorrow if there's even more puts being purchased. So that would kind of give somewhat of a bear sentiment coming, but we'll see. Uh, okay, so now let's talk about like the articles that came out. So this article was interesting because um, whoever wrote this, they're basically saying that they uh, SoFi could be a five billion five billion revenue company by twenty twenty five. So if if that is the case, that's basically like basically five x uh, like current uh, numbers. So current numbers, I believe it's nine hundred and eighty. I think they probably have it somewhere here but SoFi is projected to make around just slightly under a billion dollars in revenue um for the rest of 2021 that's what they they uh, projected so if if this person is saying that um that it could be five billion in revenue by 2025 then that's basically like five times what it's making right now so i think down here uh well yeah they go into the basics of like the three segments that that uh consists of SoFi. they have lending to the uh, galileo and financial services and they just showcase like the increase of galileo accounts and the members and all that good stuff and then um let's see let's scroll down here so oh this one's actually interesting so right here so this is as of right now or i think this was based on 2020 estimates so as you can see the majority of money that SoFi makes is based on their lending uh, structure and then here's Galileo making a little bit of money and then here's the financial services barely making any money but um, looking to the future 2025 and I think this is counting in if they actually get a bank charter where basically if SoFi acts as an acts as an actual bank then these are kind of like the projections so you can see financial services goes from 2% to 32% generating about 1.2 billion in revenue and here's the tech platform making 25% is Galileo right here. And here's the lending. So all together, it's, uh, I think it comes out to 3.7 billion. And this is in net revenue. So let's see, scrolling down right here. I think, I, I know I saw it here somewhere. Um, let's see. Uh, I think it's, it's in the next article. But here they also go into basically like the risks. Saying how... Well, as you know, like um, there's always going to be competition, and then with with banks and everything, or bank type of fintech industry, there's also like the um, the what's it called the transactions and and the rates and all that stuff that come come into play. So as more competition comes in, then you kind of have to like somewhat lower your rates if you want to stay competitive, or else people will look at other type of you know companies be like hey they're charging me less so why am i gonna stay here you know they're charging me x amount for a transaction or whatever you know so 
that's that's part of the risks and um there's there's more risks that that are covered over here in this in this next article so let's go into that so in this article they're basically saying how like david becomes goliath how how SoFi is basically basically like a small player right now but they're basically setting themselves up to be like a a you know that one stop shop easy to use app that has three different types of like you know um like a streams of revenue that is generating from lending financial and digital banking so it goes more into detail and then it tells you like uh, its history and then it even tells you right here like like who's backing uh sofi like peter peter Thiel, which is you know um basically co-founder of or investor in palantir softbank's a pretty big bank and, and so on and so on so it has some some pretty big players backing it not to mention it has a good ceo who, ha who has like a good background as well from i think he comes from twitter nfl and goldman sachs i believe so he has a pretty strong background as well and and so yeah like it, it, this this article just goes more into detail of like how big it, it's getting and like how they're putting more services and more types of lending like auto loans and all that stuff i think is the newest one so so yeah it's getting pretty big but then they also go into um the risks as well i believe so scroll down here i think i saw it here somewhere Oh yeah, so they even have like a stadium and everything, which is pretty cool. Yeah, financing. I oh, hear it. Is. So risk to SoFi's business model. So, so here they kind of talk about how like well, one of the risks is that uh, digital banks can offer comparable rates, which is what I was talking about the whole rates. So like as more competition comes in, like Square, Robinhood, and stuff like that. You know, like Robinhood, like when it IPOs, it could also be like like a risk so far and stuff and and there's other risks as well such as the um the stock co compensation and everything so like this person lays it out right here so is currently modeling a total of 644 million stock based compensation over the next five years so that's that's kind of like a lot of money going to the uh compensation for like the executives and employees and all that stuff but I mean, you have to kind of like pay your, you know, like, like the employees and such that way they like, you know, with, with typical like, um, tech companies, that's kind of like how it is nowadays. You, you want to have like somewhat of a stock competition. So that kind of like gets you like the better, better type of like employees makes you more competitive and such. And then you know like a lot of like tesla employees for example they they all get like the tesla stock and i'm pretty sure they're all happy as of right now so yeah so there's that and then then it goes into like its uh, stock price and valuation and then it, it compares it to like three other companies of firm square and paypal so it shows you like their market cap as of this is actually like not the current market cap i think the current one is around 17 or 18 for sofi but it shows you like their estimated re revenues for 2021. So so far is 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 being very closely compared to a firm, but you can't really compare it to Square and PayPal because these are more like mature companies. And then it shows you like their forward price to sales ratio. So yes, so far is it does have a, a really high price to sales ratio, like 17x around there. But but then again, it does have like a lot of like growth that's that's happening right now like i know squares is also still technically a, a growth type of company but it's definitely more on the mature side so far is barely up and coming and it has a lot of growth in many places like you know again like when, when i was showing you this this chart over here like their um their members are increasing the the accounts that they're servicing for galley are increasing so it's it's just you know consecutive quarters of growth so yeah and then i think the biggest takeaway here was again so this person is saying that within that range so far could could support a market cap of anywhere from 63 to 225 billion in 2025 so just like you know four years from now so far could be 
4x or 5x or possibly even more of like its current stock price so 2025 it could possibly be trading at around like a hundred dollars if not more so that's that's a uh, you know pretty big and this is all assuming that they meet like their their estimates and everything and it'll be even better of course if they exceed their estimates and they just keep on growing but yeah it's it's all it's all like an assumption of course and then um now let's go shift over to the short interest so uh honestly i'm not a short interest expert if you if you're a short in interest expert then you can probably like add some thing in the comments probably explain this a little bit more but i have noticed that um yesterday there was no more shares available to short so i think that that also like caused the, the price to, to to dip because people were like you know shorting more yesterday and then there was no more available shares to short but then today it seems like we're we're gaining some shares back so maybe maybe the the short sellers are buying back and then they're they're giving back the shares you know maybe they're like hey you know this is still at 23 and we expected it to dip under 20 i don't know so like i'm just showing you guys the number that it was zero yesterday and now it's, it's back to 45,000, and then we'll see what it is tomorrow if it if it increases or if it decreases all right so lastly i just wanted to cover uh, my portfolio all right so basically yeah i'm still at 500 shares of sofi i i actually closed out some puts that i was selling for a hundred and ten dollar profit i think i just make a, i just made a quick 100 bucks around there so this is showcasing 50 bucks but it's it i'm gonna wait a little bit more because it has the potential to make me I believe it's 360 dollars in total so as you can see i'm up 13 percent on this on this trade right here it's only 50 bucks but yeah i'm just gonna wait it out basically what this means is if sofi stays above 20 bucks by next friday then i just keep 360 bucks you know but if if it's if sofi dips to 20 bucks or lower then I, then i'm forced to buy a uh, thousand shares of sofi at 20 which i i don't think it would be a bad a bad buying price so either way i would keep the 360 bucks and i would buy in at a cheaper price and then i can start trading it from there as well so that's basically what i'm doing right now and and yeah so as you can see i i am also don't trading coin and i have pounds here so i'll be talking about this these stocks as well later today and if you want to check out the videos that i've been making regarding sofi coin pound here lately go ahead and check out my channel and that's it for today's video if you like this video please hit the like button don't forget to comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video